guys, happy February. And what better way to start off the month with you and I's favorite uncle, Uncle Nears. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Felix from Bars and Cigars ATL. And like I said, happy February. And what a way to start off a month of celebration other than a whiskey that deserves to be celebrated. And one that has a incredible story that is often not told. And that's really what I want to start off with this tasting or review with is history. Because often in the whiskey space, you want that attention grabbing story. And that doesn't matter whether you're a colonel from a war, whether you're a history of Americana Wild West, or whether you're farm to bottle. The story behind the whiskey often is why we purchase them or why we show interest in the first place. So often when the story isn't told, it can dampen down the historic value that it has in the whiskey space. So today we're starting off February with Uncle Nearest, and this is their single barrel. But again, let's talk about the history behind Uncle Nearest whiskey. So Uncle Nearest is actually the nickname of Nathan Green. And Nathan Green was a former slave of Reverend Call. And Reverend Call actually had a small distillery behind his church until his patrons got a little upset that a man of the cloth was practicing hooch producing. So luckily he had Nathan Green who actually was the one doing most of the labor and kept it going to the practices and methodologies that they still have today. So Nathan Green, thank you for this whiskey. So we're gonna walk through this. Uh, we're gonna talk about the color of the whiskey, the nose, then the palette, and then I'll give you my overall summary. And this one especially unique is because it's their single barrel. And I know for a long time that was either allocated or distillery only, and now you can find it on shelves a little bit more. So let's get into it. Let's not waste any time. Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of information out about the uh, blend or makeup of this whiskey here, or even the age. I do know that originally uh, Uncle Nearis was of course being sourced and in recent years uh, they started to distill their own mash. So again, I don't know the makeup of this one and I don't know whether or not it's sourced or their own juice. What, about, what I can say, it is a single barrel, hard to find again, and it is uh, coming in at 119 proof. Uh, this is barrel 81. And I was lucky enough to grab this one here uh, down in Florida at the last uh, FAMU and Bethune Cookman Classic. So it's Black History Month through and through. So I've been saving it that long and I'm glad to open it this February. So let's get into it. Usually what I like to do is of course swirl it around and just check out the viscosity or the legs that's on the glass, uh, the thickness of it. And that often tells me whether it's oily, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, buttery, thick, things of that nature. And then we'll get into the nose and then the palate. Up front, it's just showing just a light amount of legs there. Uh, not too viscous, seems to be light. And then speaking of light, the color here, it is a light amber, I would say maybe even more honey than anything there in the light. So nice golden color not too viscous but really good so let's take it to the nose and see oh man really nice really nice on the nose uh again i mentioned it's 119 proof but there's absolutely very little or i was going to say absolutely no ethanol burn to it and it starts off really fruit forward in the nose so wow very nice nose. It reminds me of overriped maybe apricot or maybe even apricot preserves or jam. Very sweet, but light, nice and light and bright and all that citrus and oh man, that is nice on the nose. There's some honey on the, on the nose as well. And just in the background in that aroma. You get that butterscotch. It is a nice butterscotch on the nose. So apricot preserves, honey, and butterscotch. Really sweet, uh, not in a decadent sense, but bright sweetness on the nose. And again, 
the, my surprise is that there's absolutely no burn on the nose. I can nose this all day. Wow. Really nice and approachable on the scent. Let's see if that translates to the palate. Now you do pick up a little bit more of the proof, so it does have a little bit more presence in the palate than it does the nose. But again, I think it's still very sweet uh, throughout, uh, from the beginning to the middle, I can say for that point. Uh, very sweet. You do get that that punch there of that 119. It's definitely there. But again, I'm getting that butterscotch is coming in. There's a new introduction flavor, which is peanut. Kind of like a honey roasted peanut. That's it. It's sweet, but you get that peanut, just butteriness in there. And, and the honey. The honey is still there. The honey is there. And I mentioned that it was fruit forward and sweet from front to middle. From middle to back, you start to get the pepper. Yeah, you start to get the pepper. And I would say maybe, I could see tobacco. I could see maybe like a sweet tobacco being in there. Oh yeah. So nice little transition uh, between the front and the back, different. It shows its presence, definitely more so in the back, or where you start to get some of that pepper, some of that tobacco. And let's talk about the finish too. Surprisingly, nice finish. Medium to long, it's still there. Has a light hug. It's not a big old Kentucky Bear hug, but it's a nice hug. It does warm you a little bit on the upper chest, but again, not heavy. I've had actually uh, some whiskeys that are lower proof, maybe 116, 115, that drinks hotter than this. So this to be 119, very nice. I would have maybe given it a, like a 110 maybe, um, but definitely 119, very approachable, very easy. Even if you wasn't like a big proof dog, uh, this is very approachable. So if you like the lighter stuff, I could see you still being able to get this. But if you are a big proof guy, it's still, it's not watered down, right? It's still gonna make itself present. It just takes some time for it to get there, right? It's not gonna punch you in the face. Yeah, that honey comes out even more. The peanut is there. The fruit is still there. I can't necessarily say it's apricot jam anymore because of that, you get some of that heat so it's not as sweet or as you know, jelly-like or jam uh, as, as it was on the nose. But it's definitely still fruit forward, peanut, honey. Then it transitions to, it brings some pepper in on the back end and brings some tobacco in. And a nice finish that is, yeah, I would say it's a solid medium, medium to long, eh, medium. So overall, my thoughts and my summary of this, uh, great nose, better palate. Uh, I just wish I had some history on this, like the age or the makeup, corn, rye, just the makeup of it. It's not here on the bottle. Yeah, so I wish I had a little bit more, uh, just to, again, to continue the storytelling and the history behind it so I know what's in the glass. But from once it leaves the bottle to actually in your glass, you're talking about a very, very good whiskey. And again, I know it's a single barrel, so yours may be a little bit different if you can find it. Also, price point. I believe I only paid 89 uh, bucks for this. So it was still allocated, it was still behind the shelf. But if you can find it, I think it's a really good whiskey. Again, it has a great story behind it. Uh, and the flavors, like let's talk about it. Apricot, honey, uh, some, some, maybe some, you know, uh, tobacco in there. I really think you can't go wrong with this one. So this is a good whiskey. Remember to light up your life. Guys, I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna enjoy it for the rest of Black History Month with some great cigars that I got from blackboxcigarclub.com. Uh, Definitely follow them. Follow Uncle Nears and keep following bars and cigars so you don't miss a review of whiskey, cigars, or cigar accessories. All right, guys, light up your life and happy February.